In this problem, we're told a bicyclist is finishing his repair on a flat tire when a friend rides by with a constant speed of 3.5 meters per second. Two seconds later, the bicyclist hops on his bike and accelerates at 2.4 meters per second squared until he catches his friend. A, how much time does it take until he catches his friend? B, how far has he traveled in this time? And B, what was his speed when he catches up? All right, so the first thing you always want to do is draw what's going on. So we have this guy, right? And so this is going to be the person who's repairing their tire, right? And this is going to be the friend. So we know the friend is going to, imagine this is the friend, right? So he's going to speed by, and then two seconds is going to pass, and he's going to be traveling 3.5 meters per second, right? And then this guy is still going to be zero, and then his acceleration at this point, he's going to start accelerating at 2.4 meters per second, right? And so the distance between the two, right, we know he's traveling at 3.5 meters per second for two seconds. So the distance between them at the point when this guy starts moving is going to be uh, seven meters, right? So how do we want to solve for this? The way we're going to do it is by creating a final position function for each of them and setting them equal. So if you look at this equation here, delta x equals v sub 0 times t plus 1 half at squared. Basically, you can rewrite it as x final is equal to x initial, right, plus v sub 0 times t plus 1 half at squared, right? Because x, if you minus this to the other side, you get x final minus x0, which is change in x. So all we did was manipulate the equation a bit. And so what we're going to do is create an x final or an equation for them for each of the persons or each person and then set them equal. So you'll see how this works, but let's just go ahead and start with person one. So X final is equal to the initial position. And so what you want to do is imagine their starting position, right? You want to imagine this guy's at the initial point. So you can just pick one, but imagine they're starting at the origin. So we're going to say the person behind always starts at the origin. So his initial position is going to be zero, right? On the X axis, he's at zero. So X zero is zero plus his initial velocity. So this one's going to start at rest, right? Cause he's in place and he's about to move. So this is zero plus zero times t, right? It's still zero, so this whole thing becomes zero. And then it's just one half times his acceleration, which is 2.4, right, times uh, t squared. So this is his final position function, okay? And then uh, we'll just call this one for the guy one, we'll say, and this is person two. And so x final for the second person, if this is the origin, and then we try to look at the x, this guy's gonna start seven meters ahead. So his x initial position is uh, seven meters ahead. So his is seven plus v sub zero, his initial velocity is going to be 3.5 meters per second, right? His speed at the beginning is 3.5. And we know it's constant throughout the entire time, so it's not going to actually change. So plus 3.5 times t, right? And then plus one half at squared. So notice this person is not going to be accelerating. Their speed's constant, meaning acceleration is zero. So this whole thing is going to become zero. So we really don't have to add anything. So his final position is just seven plus 3.5 t. And so what we're going to do is set them equal. And then the time value we get is going to be when their final position is equal, right? And that's what we're trying to find for A. How long until they catch up or they're at the same position? So setting them equal, 1 half times 2.4 is just 1.2. So I'm just going to write 1.2 t squared is equal to 7 plus 3.5 t. And so you should notice if we minus this to the other side, 1.2 t squared minus 3.5 t, right? All we're doing is moving it to the other side. And then it's going to be minus 7, right? So what you should notice about this is that this is going to be a quadratic equation. Right, and so you can use quadratic or the quadratic equation to solve for this. Right, this is quadratic form, so you can use the quadratic equation to solve, or you can just plug it in your calculator and then do it graphically. Uh, I think that's the easiest way to do it. So, what you want to do is just take this equation, plug it in your calculator or your graphing calculator if you have one, and then when you do it, you should get two different t values. One's going to be negative and one's going to be positive. So, what you want to do is the positive value is going to be the only one that actually works, and then what you can do is just look where it crosses the x-axis. Right, because that's essentially what a quadratic, what you do when you solve quadratics. And if you look, the positive value at which this graph is going to uh, cross the x-axis is 4.2, 4.2796, uh, and so on, which is basically 4.28. So this is just going to be the time, right? Time or t is seconds. So 4.28 seconds. That's going to be how long it takes, right? So you can just use quadratics if you want, but I think graphing is easier. So 4.28 seconds. That's going to be how long it takes um, for number one to catch up to number two. Right, so 4.28 seconds, that's your answer to A. Now let's go ahead and move on to B and C. So for B and C, they're going to be a bit simpler. We just have to use kinematics. So for B, how far is he traveling this time? So uh, what do we know about, uh, right? So when they say how far has he traveled, they're talking about the first guy. So what do we know about him? We know his initial velocity is zero. Right, we know his acceleration is 2.4. And then we know the time or how long he's traveling is for 4.28 seconds, right? We just found that in the last one. And what we're trying to do is solve for how far he traveled. So we're trying to find delta x, the change in position. Right, so the way we're going to do this is by using kinematics because we have three of the variables, so we can just plug in. 
So the equation we should use is this one right here, I think, because it's the easiest and based on the variables we're given, right? We're given V sub zero, we're given T, and we're given A. So delta X equals V sub zero times T plus one half A T squared. So delta X equals V sub zero. Uh, v sub zero zero times T, doesn't matter what it is, it's still zero. And then it's just going to be uh, one half times A. A is 2.4 times T squared, so 4.28 squared. So what you're going to want to do is do 0.5 or 1 half times 2.4 and then multiply by 4.28 squared. And when you do that, you'll get delta x equals 21.98. And so I'm going to round to 22 and then keep in mind delta x is the change in position or we measure that in meters. So 22 meters, that's going to be uh, how far he travels to catch up, right? So how long it takes him to catch up. Uh, so 22 meters is your answer to B. Now let's move on to C. So for tree, uh, C, we're trying to find his speed at this time, right? When he catches up. So we can use the same kinematic variables in the last one, right? We know delta x is now 22 uh, meters. Uh, but yeah, so we can choose any equation as long as it contains uh, v, uh, right? But the only one we can't use is uh, this one right here, right? Because it doesn't contain v. But you can use any of the others because we have every variable now. So the one I'm going to use is this one at the top, v equals v sub 0 uh, plus a times t, just because it's the easiest. Uh, but we're going to be solving for v, right? His velocity uh, at whenever he catches up, right? So v equals the initial velocity, which is 0. Plus his acceleration, he's going to be accelerating uh, 2.4 meters per second. Or sorry, this isn't uh, meters per second, right? We measure acceleration in meters per second squared. Sorry, that's a mistake. But uh, it's still, the answer is still right. I just forgot to put the correct units. This is meters per second squared. So it's just going to be V sub 0, which is uh, 2.4. Or sorry, acceleration is 2.4. Times T, which is going to be uh, 4.28. So 4.28 is T. And then all you have to do is multiply it out, right? So the acceleration times time gives you the final velocity, right? So 2.4 times 4.28. When you do that, you'll get 10.272. And then the units for this is meters per second, right? Because this is going to be in uh, meters per second squared. And then this is seconds, so it's going to cancel one off. But yeah, so 10.272 meters per second. You can round and just say 10.3 meters per second, whatever you want to do. Just make sure you do it how your teacher wants you to do. But yeah, 10.3 meters per second, that's going to be your answer to C. Uh, your answer to B was 22 meters, and then your answer to A was 4.28 seconds. But yeah, so these are going to be your answers, and hopefully you found this useful.